Today I'm going to do uh, experiment number five from the elementary with Vernier manual and it is the cool reaction lab and in that lab we have some vinegar and some baking soda and we're going to mix them together and uh, of course that gets kind of kind of fun if you look at the cover of the, uh, the, the book there uh, but what we're going to do is to use the lab quest and the temperature sensor and record the temperature as that reaction occurs and maybe we'll see a change when we do that and so to start off I will just plug in my temperature sensor there put it down into my glass there and we have this tray here in case I, I get excited and make everything go all over the place with the too much vinegar and baking soda so I'm going to put some in there the book kind of specifies how much to use but that looks pretty good and what I'm going to do is start the data collection first before we add the, um, the baking soda. And when you plug in the temperature sensor to the LabQuest, it auto IDs the sensor. And right now it defaults to being 180 seconds for our time and two samples per second. But in the lab, it doesn't want us to use that, that long of time. And so we need to change that to 40 seconds. And so it's very easy to do. I just come down and tap on length. And I can go here and change my experiment length. Instead of 180, I want 40 seconds. And there we go. So I say OK. And so now my experimental length is um, 40 seconds. And I'm now ready to collect. Uh, the lab says to start collection for about five seconds uh, before we actually add the, uh, the other reactant there. But before I start, I want to think about this for a second. Maybe I want to draw a prediction. A lot of labs have you do predictions. And the LabQuest unit has the ability um, to do a prediction uh, on board there. So I can tap on my graph view there. And it's under Analyze. So I can come down to draw a prediction. And it gives me a screen where I can draw the prediction. So I'm going to say, well, maybe it goes along like this, and I add the baking soda, and then maybe it gets warmer. If I don't like my prediction, I can always press reset and do another one. But uh, I'm fine with that one. So I'll say, I'll say OK. And so it draws my prediction on the graph. And now I'm ready to begin the collection. So let me. Get some baking soda there. Lab calls for a, a level teaspoon. That's close to being level there. And uh, so I start the collection. And it starts collecting. So three seconds, four, five, and. And you see now why I have the tray. Um, so the device is collecting the temperature uh, twice a second and is drawing that graph real time as it's collecting. And so we actually see what happens here. And it did not go up as my prediction said it would do. It actually went down. And um, so it was cooling off. I guess that's why they named the lab the, the cool reaction. And so it's almost finished data collection there. And so 40 seconds is up and it, it stopped uh, collection there. And uh, what the lab asked the students to do now is to go in and do some analysis. And so uh, concepts like minimum and maximum um, are, are covered here. So some mathematical concepts are, are coming into this. So what I can do is I can do some statistics. And I'm going to go to Analyze. And we go to Statistics. And over on the right side of the screen, we see the minimum temperature was 18.2, the maximum was 21.7, um, and so we can see that there. And we can even move along our graph and actually find the values at different points in time if we want to. Well, in this lab, we've uh, covered some concepts that are kind of interesting. Um, we have done some temperature change with the temperature sensor while doing a chemical reaction. So we had the vinegar and the, the baking soda, and as we added those two things together, we saw a temperature change. And uh, if you're interested in doing this lab, you can download it for free from the Vernier website and, uh, and give it a try.
I'm going to do the grip strength lab and it actually appears in two forms. Uh, one version in the elementary with the uh, Vernier manual and with the middle school manual. The difference being the level of analysis that these students um, are asked to do uh, with that. So depending on the, the grade level you're dealing with and, and there are things that are appropriate for it. Um, so for this lab we're going to use a gas pressure sensor and we've connected it to a uh, water bottle via the tube that comes with the sensor and we have our LabQuest unit. So I'll start off by just plugging in the, the sensor to the LabQuest and the LabQuest detects that it's that sensor and it comes up with a default of 900 seconds and the lab has the students use less time so we don't need 15 minutes we just need one minute so 60 seconds so I need to change that so it's very easy to do I just tap on the link there and instead of 900 I make that 60 and there we go so I'm okay with that and so now our experimental length is 60 seconds and I'm ready to collect so what the lab has the students do is they're going to squeeze the bottle and they'll do it with their left hand and then they'll end up switching it over and doing it with the right hand to do a comparison so I'm ready to collect and so I start squeezing I press collect and I will continue to squeeze for 60 seconds and as we do this, you'll see that it is drawing the graph real time. And so it's recording data once per second, and it's going to do that for those 60 seconds, and you're squeezing and squeezing. Uh, you may notice that the, uh, the pressure that's listed there begins to, to decrease a little bit as my muscles fatigue, then my ability to squeeze the bottle begins to uh, decrease there. And so it's... 40 seconds. It's nice to get into a discussion of you know what happens to your muscles as you do this so um, it, you can actually bridge it into physiology if you would like also. Okay almost there. Okay when I'm done um, the LabQuest auto scales the graph so it just kind of changes the scale so that we can uh, observe the graph in a little bit greater detail. And now uh, I'm going to switch hands and use my left hand, um, but I want to keep my first run and so I'm going to go over and tap on the, the store button. Right here there's the little filing cabinet so that allows me to store the run. Um, and I'm do just like I did before. I am going to squeeze that, press collect, and do the same thing that I did before, only this time with my left hand. And so you can get into maybe a discussion of, you know, which is your dominant hand, right hand, left hand. Um, you could compare different students in the groups. So it looks like I am significantly weaker in my left hand. Now you'll notice right now that it's only displaying one of the runs. So that's the second run and it's also in a different color. It always defaults to going to a different color when you do another run. And I'm almost done there. Okay, so there's my, my second run. Now it would be nice to be able to see both runs together so that I can compare the values there. So we can do that very easily by tapping here. You'll notice it says run two. And if I tap there it says run one, run two, or all runs. And I will tap all runs and then we see the two graphs displayed together. The red being my right hand and the blue my left. And the lab has the students uh, go in and do some analysis and what they're supposed to do is to find the mean value uh, for both the right hand and left hand. So kind of determine which one is stronger. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Statistics, 
And I'll start with my right hand. So that's the red one. And so the mean value there is 119 kilopascals. And then I will go and do left hand. And so the value for that one is 117. So indeed, my left hand is weaker than my right hand. And so if you're interested in seeing these labs for yourself, you can download them from our website. And they are, again, available in both the middle school and elementary versions. And so it's a fun lab for students to try out.